Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I wanted to get started with building some automated machine images for our new home lab and using Packer. Packer is an awesome tool that will build automated machine images for a bunch of different types of services and it accepts input with JSON files, making it really simple to use and really user friendly. Now you can go ahead and get started with Packer by clicking the download link here and downloading it for the, your specific operating system. I downloaded the Windows 64 bit. This simply gives you a zip file with an exe inside that you can use. There's no strings attached with that. It's just one single file that you run. And we're going to be using the VirtualBox builder here since we're going to be basing our home lab inside of VirtualBox. Now the type of builder that we're going to be using is called VirtualBox ISO. What this is going to do is build a VirtualBox image or an OVA from an ISO file. So Packer is going to start up a virtual machine with the specified ISO file. It's going to run different commands on it based on the input we give it and then save that virtual machine and export it as an OVA. From there we can import that OVA as many times as we want and use that as the base for our servers. So today we're going to be going over making a simple base image for an Ubuntu 1804 machine. Once we have that base image we can use that multiple times in our environment to build things on top of. So instead of just talking about Packer, let's go ahead and take a look at a sample file that I made. So I'll go into this Packer directory here, and we have this Ubuntu 18 base.json file. Now this is actually going to be the input for Packer when we go ahead and build it. Let's take a look at what's inside. So inside this file, uh, we have a builder declared in here, and all this is just going to be in a JSON format. So if we run this, it's going to go ahead and build a virtual box image from the specs that we give it here. So the first thing you specify is the VM name, which is just going to be the name of the virtual machine that's created. And then we input the guest OS type. Now this is another standard virtual box selection that you'd make when you're installing any operating system. The type is going to be a virtual box ISO since we're building a virtual machine from an ISO image. Then we can also specify the amount of CPUs that we want to allocate and the amount of RAM that we want to allocate. As, as well as the disk size. And this is going to be in megabytes. So this is going to create a VM with one CPU core, one gig of memory, and 10 gigabytes of disk space. I wanted to keep this small and simple for our base image. That way, if we spin up a lot of servers at once, it's not going to be too hard on anyone's machine. The next thing we specify is the ISO checksum type and the ISO checksum. This is just going to be used to validate the ISO once it downloads it. The next thing we specify is the ISO URL. Now, what's cool about this is you might notice that this is just a relative path out of an HTTP directory for an ISO file. Now, Packer, when it runs, is actually going to spin up its own web server and serve content out of it so that it can communicate with the client node. Now, you don't actually have to configure this at all in any way except specify the HTTP directory, which we did here. So, the HTTP directory is just HTTP. And the ISO that it's going to try to grab is this Ubuntu 1804 mini ISO. So if we go back into the Packer directory, you'll see there's actually an HTTP directory here. And this that's what it's going to be serving once it starts up that HTTP server. So if we take a look inside, we can see that we do have the Ubuntu 1804 mini ISO there. And that's where it's going to be getting the ISO from. We are using the mini ISO from the netboot config just so that it's a very small ISO to use. And it also is a very small image. So there's not much on it. There's no GUI or anything like that. We want to start building our image from the barest operating system possible. That way we can only add the things that we need to it. So let's take a look back at this Packer JSON file. The next thing we're going to specify is the SSH credentials that it's going to try to use. This doesn't actually set the SSH credentials. It just is specifying what it's going to try to use after the machine boots. And we also set a uh, wait timeout for that. So once it starts, once Packer starts to build this image, if it doesn't, if it isn't able to SSH within 60 minutes, it's just going to error out and say that it failed. The next thing that we specify is headless. Now, a headless installation would just mean that it all happens in the background and the virtual machine doesn't actually pop up on your screen. I set that to false so we can actually see what it's doing. Then we also need to specify a shutdown command. This is the command it's going to run to actually turn the machine off. So we can see it's just running uh, sudo shutdown and echoing the sudo password into it. And then uh, the HTTP directory, as we talked about earlier, 
uh, boot wait is going to be the amount of time that it waits before it tries to run this boot command. The boot command is what's going to be entered to edit the boot parameters and the kernel boot parameters when the virtual machine is actually started. So when this goes and selects over and highlights to install the operating system, it's going to add these extra kernel boot parameters to it before it actually boots. So the thing that's going to pass is the URL parameter, which is going to be the URL of the preceded file. Now notice that there are very are sorry, notice that there are variables here for the HTTP server. And that's because this is using Packer's HTTP server that it dynamically stands up. We're going to say auto equals true, which means this is going to be an automated install, and all the questions for installation should be answered with this preseed file. We're also going to specify where the initial RAM disk is, so it knows where to look for that. And we specify the host name so we can talk on the network, and then press enter so that it boots. Now, the kernel parameters can be pretty tricky when you're doing these installations because they vary between every operating system and every version of the operating system. So since we're using Ubuntu 18.04, uh, there's also some really good documentation out there of all the different boot parameters. These ones that I specified here, they I know they should be good for Ubuntu 16.04 and 18.04. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. I haven't tested it. But we'll go back to this JSON file. So the next thing we specify is the post shutdown delay. And I set that as two minutes just to be safe. That's just the amount of time it's going to wait before it runs the post command. Now the only post command that we have here is this vbox manage post, which is actually just gonna run the vbox manage command. And what this is gonna do is take the uh, take NIC1, which is the only network interface, and set that to be a NAT network. And the name of that NAT network is going to be NAT network. Now, in order to actually have this work, we're going to need to go into VirtualBox before you're running these Packer scripts. You'll have to do this one yourself and go into File, Preferences, Network, and then click on this plus button here and it will add a new NAT network and yours will just be named NAT network. And once you do that, you should be all set to go. Now, we're going to be using a NAT network interface because I think it would be good for our needs at the beginning. If you're not familiar with how a NAT network works, uh, this website here provided a really good diagram for it. Basically, VirtualBox is going to set up a DHCP and a NAT server where it's going to assign IP addresses on the same subnet to all of the virtual machines connected to that network. Those VMs are all able to talk to each other, and they're also able to get out to the internet through this NAT interface. But the advantage of this is that these are all on their own isolated subnet so that Anything that you're doing in this lab, you're able to keep away from your home network and nothing from the outside is able to get in unless you set up port forwarding. Now, the other thing I mentioned is that Packer is using a pre-seed file to do the fully automated installation. Some of you might not be familiar with pre-seed files and that's perfectly okay. I provided an example one that we can be using for the lab. Uh, basically, a pre-seed file is going to be the answers to all the installation questions that the operating system typically asks. So instead of you having to manually specify the language and the time zone and things like that, the pre-seed file, pre file provides the answers for that. And Ubuntu has a lot of documentation on, on that. And they also provide an example pre-seed file here. Now the one that we're going to be using, I actually modified from that example one. Their example one is really good, especially for just a base. But that's going to be located in the HTTP directory because it's going to be fetched via the web server. So if we go ahead and take a look at this pre-seed file that I made, you can see that it answers a lot of the installation questions that are asked. So you can see that you know, the language is specified as English, the country is US, so on and so forth. It's going to go ahead and answer all of the questions that are asked in the installation process so that we don't have to answer any of them, which makes it fully automated. Now you can go, feel free to change a lot of these configuration settings. For example, the host name uh, is just going to be set to host lab VM and it's going to have no domain. These things are going to change as we go forward in the series and we have you know, more of a need to change these different settings. Right now it also is going to create an initial user account, uh, the user conda with the password conda, and that's going to be the credentials that Packer also tries to use for SSH at the beginning. Moving forward we have partitioning, which is just going to select the first and only drive, which is the virtual hard drive. It's going to select that and image that drive. And then the thing that we're going to play with the most is going to be the package selection and the late commands. So package selection is just going to be 
what packages are going to come pre-installed on the machine when it boots. So the first thing we want to do is install an open SSH server for sure, because we're going to need to be able to SSH into our machine. And now in this line here, this package selection include, after this, anything that you put here would be the same as if you put app install blank. And these would be the blanks. So you can say app install build essential, Ansible, and Vim. Uh, Ansible is going to be something that we're going to be using probably in the next video for provisioning. And I put Vim in there just because that's my favorite text editor and I like to have that available at all times. The next thing is going to be the late command. This is basically a series of bash commands that you can run when the image finishes installing. So right now I just make it so that the conda user can sudo without a password for everything. That's going to help us when we get into using Ansible, especially with just using a regular password. And that's it for the preseed file. All right, so that was definitely a lot of information all at once, but I hope that made sense. If not, let's go ahead and take a look at actually using Packer, and hopefully that will make it all come together. So it, this is going to be a command line tool, and you're just going to have to go to the directory where you have Packer installed. I have it in the uh, Packer directory. And so we can see here, oh, do you still Linux? We can see here that we have our HTTP directory, packer.exe, and our Ubuntu base JSON file. So we can do packer.exe validate and then our JSON file. What this is going to do is make sure that there's no errors in our actual template before we go ahead and try to use it. So if we run that, it should come back and say that this is a valid template. Perfect. So the template validated successfully. Now, since it validated successfully, we can go ahead and run Packer again. We're going to say packer.exe build, and then the name of the JSON file. Go ahead and press enter. And now this is going to actually spin up the virtual machine. You'll see it pop up, and it'll start to install the uh, image onto it. You can see here it's going to go ahead and enter the boot command, where it specifies the pre-seed location. And then it'll go ahead and start to install the system. Notice how it didn't ask us any questions, it just jumped right into the installation process, and that's because we specified the preseed file. Now I'm going to cut to when this is finished so we don't have to sit around and wait, and I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, and Packer just finished creating our image. As we can see here, it says Ubuntu base VM. Uh, the files are in this output directory. So if we go back into our Packer directory, we can see that there is an output for Ubuntu base. And there is an OBF file in there, which is exactly what we wanted. So now if we go into VirtualBox, and we go and do a, uh, see, yeah, go to File, and then Import Appliance. And if we go to that output directory, we should be able to import the uh, image that we just created. So we go to Desktop, Packer, Output, and we'll get this OBF file. And we can see here, it's got the specifications that we put into place with one CPU, one gig of RAM. We'll go ahead and hit import. All right, and after that finishes importing, we can take a look down here and see we have our Ubuntu 18 base image. If we go into the settings under network, we can see that it did create our NAT network adapter, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we can go ahead and boot this up, and it should have the image that we created. Now the image that we created was just a very bare image. It's not going to have a GUI or anything. You can see it's just a server version of Ubuntu. But we can log in with the credentials that we made from the pre-seed, and we have access. Now keep in mind, we just imported one instance of this base image, but we could do this multiple times, and we will later in the series to create multiple servers. Now don't worry about trying to replicate any of the code or anything that I've shown in this video. I'm going to put it all into a public GitHub repository and put the link down in the description. If you have any questions or any services that you want to see set up in this home lab, please feel free to let me know.